from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2020, virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman. This is theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon CloudNativeCon Europe 2020, the virtual event. Of course, when we talk about uh, cloud native, we talk about Kubernetes, there's, there's a lot that's happening to modernize the infrastructure, but a very important thing that we're going to talk about today is also what's happening up the stack, what sits on top of it in some of the new use cases and applications that are enabled by all of this modern environment. And for that, we're going to talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning or AI and ML as we tend to talk in the industry. So happy to welcome to the program. We have two first time guests uh, joining us from Red Hat. Uh, first of all, we have Avanav Joshi, uh, and Tushar Katarki. Uh, they are both senior managers, part of the OpenShift group. Abhinav is uh, in, in the product marketing, and Tushar is in product management. Uh, Abhinav and uh, Tushar, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks a lot, Stu. We are glad to be here. Thanks, Stu, and uh, glad to be here uh, at uh, KubeCon. All right, so uh, Abhinav, I, I mentioned in the intro here, uh, you, you know, modernization in the infrastructure is awesome, uh, and, but really it's an enabler. We know, I, I'm an infrastructure person, uh, the, the whole reason we have infrastructure is to be able to drive those applications, interact with my data and the like, and of course, AI and ML are exciting, a lot going on there, but can also be challenging. So Abhinav, if I, if I could start with you, you know, bring us inside your customers that you're talking to. What are, you know, the, the, the challenges, the opportunities, what are they seeing in this space? And maybe what, what's, what's been holding them back from really uh, unlocking the, the, the value that is expected? Yep, that's a very good question to kick off the conversation, right? So what we are seeing is uh, the organization, they typically face a lot of challenges when they're trying to build an AI ML environment, right? And the first one is like a talent shortage. So there is a, like a limited amount of the AIM and expertise in the market, and especially the data scientists that are responsible for building out the machine learning and the deep learning models. Uh, so yeah, it's hard to find them and to be able to retain them and also with other talent like a data engineer or, or an app dev folks as well. And, and the lack of talent can actually um, install the projects, right? And the second key challenge that we see is, the lack of the readily usable data. So the businesses collect a lot of data, but uh, must find the right data and, and make it ready for the data scientists to be able to build out, to be able to test and train the machine learning models. If you don't have the right kind of data, so the predictions that your model is going to do in the real world is only going to be so good. So that becomes a challenge as well to be able to find and be able to like wrangle the right kind of data. And the third key challenge that we see is, is the lack of the rapid availability of the compute infrastructure, the data and machine learning and the app dev tools for the various personas like a data scientist, a data engineer, the software developers and so on. That can also uh, uh, slow down the project, right? Because uh, if all your teams are waiting on the infrastructure and the tooling of their choice to be provisioned on a recurring basis, uh, and they don't get it in a timely manner, uh, it can be, uh, yeah, it can stall the project. Uh, and then the next one is the lack of collaboration. So you have all these kinds of teams that are involved in the AI project, right? And they have to collaborate with each other because the work one of the team does has a dependency on a different team. Like say, for example, the data scientists are responsible for building the machine learning models. And then what they have to do is they have to work with the app dev teams uh, to make sure the models get, uh, uh, and yeah, say integrated as part of the app dev processes and ultimately rolled out into the production. So if all these teams are operating in say silos and there is lack of collaboration between the teams, so this can stall the projects as well. And finally, what we see is the data scientists, they typically start the, the machine learning model, uh, the modeling on their individual say PCs or laptops, right? And they don't focus on the operational aspects of the solution. So what this means is when the IT teams uh, have to roll all this out into a production uh, kind of a, a deployment, so they get challenged to, to take all the work that has been uh, yeah, done by the individuals, right? And then uh, be able to make you know, sense out of it, be able to make sure that it can be seamlessly brought up in a production 
like environment in a consistent way, be it on premises, be it in the cloud, or be it, uh, say, at the edge. So these are some of the key challenges that we see that the organizations are facing as they, uh, say, try to take the AI projects from, say, pilot to production. Well, some of those things uh, seem like repetition of what we've had in the past. Obviously, silos have been, you know, the, the bane of uh, IT moving forward. Uh, and of course, for, for many years, we've been talking about that gap between d developers uh, and, and what's happening uh, in, in the operations side. So Tushar, help us connect the dots, you know, containers, uh, Kubernetes, the whole DevOps movement. How is this uh, setting us up to actually be successful uh, for solutions like AI and ML? Sure, Stu. I mean, in fact, you said it, right? I mean, uh, in, you know, like, in, you know, in the world of software, uh, you know, in the world of microservices, in the uh, world of app modernization, uh, in the world of DevOps, uh, of, uh, in the past 10, 15 years, uh, we have seen this uh, evolution, revolution uh, happen, right? Uh, with containers and Kubernetes, uh, driving more DevOps behavior, driving more agile behavior. Uh, and, uh, you know, so this, uh, in fact, is what we are trying to say here uh, can is applicable to AI ML also. So the value of containers, Kubernetes, uh, DevOps, and OpenShift for software development and uh, is directly applicable for uh, AI projects to make them more agile, to get them into production, uh, to make them more uh, valuable uh, to uh, organizations so that uh, they can realize the full potential of AI. Um, you know, we already touched upon a few personas, so it's useful to think about who the users are, who the personas are, uh, you know, um, the, I mean, I talked about data scientists, uh, these are the people who obviously do the machine learning itself, do the modeling, uh, you know, um, you know, then there are data engineers who do the plumbing, who provide the essential data, I mean, data is so essential to uh, machine learning and deep learning, and so there are data engineers, there are app developers, uh, you know, who uh, in some ways will then use the output of what the data scientists have produced in terms of models and then incorporate them into services. And of course, you know, uh, you know, none of these things are purely cast in stone. There's a lot of overlap. You could find that data scientists are app developers as well. You'll see some of app developers being data scientists, similar with data engineers. So, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a continuum rather than strict boundaries. But regardless, you know, what all these, uh, you know, personas or groups of uh, people need or experts need is, you know, self-service uh, to their ex uh, preferred tools and uh, compute and storage resources to be productive. Uh, you know, so, and then let's not forget the IT engineering and operations teams that need to uh, make all this happen in an easy, reliable, available manner and something that is very secure. So containers uh, help here, right? They help you quickly and easily deploy a broad set of machine learning tools, data tools uh, across the cloud, the hybrid cloud from you know, data center to public cloud to the edge in a very consistent way. You know, teams can therefore iteratively modify, uh, you know, change, Share container images, machine learning models uh, with versioning uh, and track changes, and and this could be uh, applicable to both containers as well as to the data, uh, by the way, and uh, you know and be transparent, uh, you know, and, and, and transparency helps in collaboration, but also it could help with regulatory reasons later on in the process. So. Uh, you know, and then with containers, uh, because of the inherent process isolation, resource control, uh, and protection from threats, they can also be very secure. Um, now, Kubernetes takes it to the next level. Uh, it, uh, for first of all, it uh, forms a cluster of all your compute and data resources. Uh, it helps you to run your containerized tools and whatever you develop on them uh, in a consistent way. Uh, with access to these uh, shared compute uh, and centralized compute and storage and networking resources uh, from the, uh, the, the data center, the edge of the public cloud. Uh, they provide uh, things like uh, resource management, workload scheduling, uh, multi-tenancy controls, so that you can be uh, proper neighbors, if you will, 
uh, and quota enforcement, right? Uh, and so the value of, uh, now uh, that's Kubernetes. Now, if you want to up-level it further, if you want to enhance uh, what Kubernetes offers, uh, then you go into how do you write applications? How do you actually um, uh, make those models into services? And that's where, and how do you life cycle them? And that's where the power of Helm and furthermore Kubernetes operators really comes into the picture while Helm helps in installing some of this for a complete lifecycle experience. Uh, you know, a Kubernetes operator is, uh, is the way to go. Uh, and they simplify uh, the acceleration and deployment of the li and lifecycle management from end to end of your entire AIML tool chain. So all in all, you know, organizations, therefore, you'll see that they need to develop and deploy my, uh, models rapidly, uh, just like applications. That's how they get value out of it quickly. Uh, you know, uh, there is a lack of collaboration across teams, as Abhina pointed out earlier, as you noticed that has happened still in the uh, in the world of software also. So we're talking about, you know, how do you bring those best practices here to AIML, uh, DevOps approaches for machine learning operations, what, you know, many analysts and others have started calling as ML ops, right? So how do you kind of bring DevOps to machine learning? It, you know, fosters better collaboration between uh, teams, application developers, and IT operations, and uh, create this feedback loop uh, so that um, the, the time to uh, time to production uh, and the ability to take more machine learning uh, uh, into production and ML powered applications into production increases significantly. So that's kind of the uh, uh, where I wanted to uh, you know uh, you know shine a light on what you, you were referring to earlier, so. All yeah. right, uh, uh, Abhinav, of course, uh, one of the good things uh, about, about OpenShift is you have quite a lot of customers that, that have de deployed uh, the solution o over the years. Uh, bring us inside you know, some of your customers. You know, what are they doing uh, for AIML? And you know, help, help us understand you know, really what differentiates OpenShift uh, in the marketplace for, for this solution set. Yeah, absolutely, that's a very good question as well. And we're seeing a lot of traction in terms of all kinds of uh, industries, right? Be it the financial services, like healthcare, automotive, uh, the insurance, oil and gas, and manufacturing, and so on, right? For a wide variety of use cases. And what, what we are seeing is at the end of the day, like all these uh, deployments are focused on uh, helping improve the customer experience, be able to automate the business processes, and then be able to help them increase the revenue, serve their customers better, and also be able to save costs. Right? Uh, if you go to openshift.com uh, forward slash like AI dash ML, it's got like a lot of customer stories in there. But today I want to touch on uh, yeah, three of the customers we have in terms of the different uh, industries. The first one is like Royal Bank of Canada, right? So they are a top global financial uh, institution based out of Canada, and they have more than 17 million um, yeah, clients globally. Right? So they uh, recently announced that they built out an AI-powered private cloud platform that was based on OpenShift as well as uh, the NVIDIA DGX AI compute uh, system. And this whole uh, solution is actually helping them uh, transform the customer banking experience uh, by being able to deliver an AI-powered uh, intelligent apps and also at the same time uh, being able to improve the operational efficiency of their organization. And now with this kind of a solution, what they're able to do is they're able to run uh, thousands of uh, simulations and be able to analyze millions of data points in a fraction of time as what as compared to the solution that they had before. Uh, yeah, so like uh, a lot of great work going on there. The next one is the HCA Healthcare, right? So like HCA is one of the leading healthcare providers in the country, and they're based out of the Nashville uh, in uh, Tennessee, and they have more than 184 uh, hospitals, as well as more than uh, 2,000 sites uh, of care in the US, as well as in the UK. So what they did was uh, they developed a very innovative machine learning powered data platform on top of, of OpenShift to help save lives. The first use case was to help with the early detection of sepsis. Like it's a life-threatening yeah, condition. 
And then more recently, they've been able to use OpenShift and the same kind of a stack to be able to roll out the new applications that are powered by machine learning and deep learning, uh, say, to help them fight COVID-19. Right? And recently, they did a webinar as well that uh, had all the details on the challenges they had, like how did they go about it, like the people, process, and technology, and then what the outcomes are. So, and, and, and we are proud to be a partner in the solution uh, uh, to help with such a noble cause. Uh, and the third example I, I want to share here is the BMW Group and our partner, uh, DXE Technologies, right? What they've done is they've actually developed a very high-performing uh, data-driven data platform, a uh, development platform based on OpenShift uh, to be able to analyze the massive amount of data from the test fleet, um, um, the data and the speed up the, say, to help uh, speed up the, uh, the autonomous driving initiatives. Uh, and what they've also done is they've redesigned the connected drive capability that they have on top of, of OpenShift that's actually helping them provide uh, various uh, use cases uh, to help improve the customer experience right, with the customers. And now the customers are able to leverage a lot of uh, yeah, different value-add services directly from within the car, their own cars. And then... Like last year at the Red Hat Summit, so they had a keynote as well. And then this year at Summit, they were one of the innovation uh, award winners. Uh, and we have a lot more stories, right? But, but these are the three that I thought are extremely compelling that I should uh, talk about here uh, on theCUBE. Yeah, Abhinav, just a quick follow-up for you. Uh, one, of, one of the things, of course, we're looking at in 2020 is how has uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, people working from home. How has that impacted uh, projects? I, I have to think that AI and ML, one of those projects that take a little bit longer uh, to deploy, uh, is it something that you see, are they accelerating it? Are they putting on pause? Uh, you know, are, are new projects kicking off? Uh, anything you can share from customers you're hearing right now uh, as, as to the impact that they're seeing this year? Yeah, what we are seeing is that the customers are now even more keen to be able to roll out the digital uh, services that are powered by uh, AIM at a fast pace. So we see a lot of customers are now on, on the accelerated uh, timeline to be able to, uh, say, complete the AIML uh, project. So yeah, it's picking up a lot of yeah, momentum and we, lot, and we talk to uh, a, like a lot of analysts as well. And they are reporting the same thing as well, that uh, there is the interest that is actually like ramping up on the AI ML projects like across their customer base. So yeah, it's the right time uh, to be looking at the innovative uh, services that uh, can help like improve the, the uh, customer uh, the experience in the new uh, virtual world that we live in now with COVID-19. All right, uh, Tushar, you, you mentioned that there, there's a few projects involved uh, and, and of course uh, we, we know at the con this conference uh, there's there's a very large ecosystem. Uh, Red Hat is a strong contributor uh, to, to many, many open source projects. Give us a little bit of a view as to, uh, in the AI ML space, you know, wh who's involved, uh, wh which pieces are important, and, and how Red Hat looks at this, this entire ecosystem. Thank you, Sue. I mean, uh, so, so as you know, uh, I mean, technology partnerships, uh, you know, the power of uh, open, uh, is, uh, is, is, is really what is driving um, the technology world these days in any way, so, uh, and particularly in the, the, the AI ecosystem. Uh, and that is uh, you know, mainly because uh, one of the uh, machine learning is uh, you know, kind of bootstrap in the past 10 years or so, and a lot of that emerging technology to take advantage of the uh, emerging um, uh, data as well as compute power uh, has been built on the kind of the Linux ecosystem uh, with openness and you know languages like popular languages like Python, uh, etc. And so what you uh, and, and you know of course TensorFlow which is based in Java. But uh, the the point really here is that uh, the ecosystem uh, 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 plays a big role and Open plays a big role and that's uh, kind of Red Hat's cup of tea if you will and. Um, you know, Red Hat really has plays a leadership role in the uh, open ecosystem. Uh, so, if we take your question and kind of 
put it into two parts. What is the, what we are doing in the community and then what we are doing in terms of uh, partnerships themselves, commercial partnerships, technology partnerships. Uh, we'll take it, take, take it one step at a time. In terms of the community itself, uh, you know, if you step back to the three years, uh, you know, we worked, uh, you know, with other uh, vendors and users, uh, including Google and NVIDIA and uh, H2 and, and other uh, Selden, et cetera, both startups and big companies to um, develop this uh, Kubeflow ecosystem. The Kubeflow is upstream community uh, that is uh, focused on de delivering ML ops, as we talked about earlier, end-to-end -end machine learning uh, on top of Kubernetes, right? Uh, so Kubeflow uh, right now is in 1.0. It happened a few months ago. Now it's actually at 1.1. Uh, you will see it at uh, KubeCon here. Uh, and, uh, uh, and then, um, so that, that's the uh, Kubeflow community. In addition to that, we have augmented that with the Open Data Hub community, uh, which is something that uh, extends uh, the capabilities of the Kubeflow community to also add some of the data pipelining stuff and some of the data stuff that I talked about and forms a reference architecture on how to run some of this on top of OpenShift. So uh, the Open Data Hub community also uh, has um, a great way of including partners from a technology partnership perspective. And then, uh, you know, tie that with something that I mentioned earlier, which is the idea of Kubernetes operators. Now, if you take a step back, as I mentioned earlier, Kubernetes operators to help manage the life cycle of the entire application, containerized application, uh, including not only the configuration on day one, but also day two activities like update and backups, restore, et cetera, whatever the application needs uh, for proper functioning that are quote unquote operator needs for it to make sure. So so anyways, the Kubernetes operator ecosystem is also flourishing and we have increased that with the open uh, operator hub uh, dot IO, which is a, it is a community marketplace, if you will. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't call it marketplace, a community hub uh, because it's just comprised of community operators. So, so the, the, the open data hub actually can take community operators and can show you how to run that on top of OpenShift and, and manage the life cycle. Now, that's the reference architecture. Now, the other aspect of it really is, as I mentioned earlier, is the commercial aspect of it. It is the from a customer point of view, how do I get certified, uh, you know, supported um, uh, software, right? And to that extent, uh, what we have is a, uh, uh, is at the top of the, uh, from a user experience point of view, we have certified uh, operators and certified applications from the AIS, AIML ISV community uh, in the Red Hat marketplace. Uh, and, the, and from the Red Hat marketplace, it's where it becomes easy for uh, end users to easily deploy these ISVs. Some of the, uh, and manage the complete lifecycle, as I said. Uh, some of the examples of um, these uh, kinds of ISVs include startups like H2O, uh, although H2O uh, and, and uh, is kind of well known in certain sectors, you know, Percepti Labs, uh, Converge, Selden, a starburst etc and then on the other side we do have other big giants also in this which includes um, uh, partnerships with nvidia cloudera um, uh, etc that we have announced uh, including uh, also sas i got to mention um, so anyway so and now they uh, these uh, provide create that rich ecosystem for data scientists to take advantage of. Um, you know, uh, at Red Hat Summit back in April, April, uh, we along with Cloudera, uh, uh, SAS, Anaconda, uh, showcase a live demo that shows all these things to working together on top of OpenShift with this operator uh, kind of idea that I talked about. So I welcome people to go and take a look. Um, you know, uh, the the openshift.com slash eiml that. Uh, um, in our earlier reference should have a link to that. A simple Google search might also reveal some of that. But anyway, so, uh, and the other part of it is really our work with the hardware OEMs, right? And so obviously NVIDIA uh, GPUs is obviously hardware and that uh, acceleration is really important in this world, but we are also working with our OEM partners uh, like HP and Dell uh, uh, to produce this accelerated AI platform that are turnkey um, you know, solutions uh, to run your uh, data, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, 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 to create this AI, open AI platform for the quote unquote private cloud or the data center. Uh, the other thing obviously is IBM. Uh, IBM Cloud Pack for data 
uh, is uh, based on OpenShift uh, that has been around for some time and is seeing very good traction. They, uh, you know, if you think about a very turnkey solution, uh, IBM Cloud KA Pack is definitely, um, you know, kind of uh, well ahead in that. Uh, and then finally, uh, Red Hat uh, is about driving innovation in the open source community. So as I said earlier, we are doing the Open Data Hub, which is that reference architecture that showcases a combination of upstream open source projects and all these ISV ecosystems coming together. So I welcome you to take a look at that at opendatahub.io. So I think that would be kind of the, um, you know, some total of how we are uh, not only um, doing open and community building, but also uh, doing certifications and providing a, um, a, a, a to our customers that assurance that you know they can run these tools in production uh, with the help of a rich uh, certified ecosystem. Right. And well, customer I, choice is key to us, yeah. right? So that's the, the thing that the goal here is to provide our customers with a choice, right? Yeah, they can go with the open source or they can go with a commercial solution as well. So you want to make sure that they get the best in class experience on top of, of OpenShift and our broader portfolio as well. All right, uh, great, great note to end on Abhinav. Uh, thank you so much and Tushar, uh, great to see the maturation in this space, uh, such an important use case. Uh, really appreciate you sharing this uh, with, with, with the Cube and KubeCon community. Thank you. Hey, thank you, thanks a lot and have a great rest of the show. Thanks everyone. Thank you. And stay, stay with us, stay with us for lots more coverage from KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, Europe 2020, the virtual edition. I'm Stu Miniman and thank you as always for watching theCUBE.